So, I know the movie has recently come out to, shall we say, tepid reviews? Alright, let's be honest, most people seem to really dislike this movie. Is it the casting choices, the stupid terms for muggles, the fact that almost zero characters have easy-to-say names? I mean, even Tina's real name is unusual? What happened to Hermione, right? Who's to say for sure? There are so many small problems with this movie, and the series as a whole, that I'm sure I could put together an hour-long video just listing them all. So instead, I'm going to try something different. Instead of going through all the things that make me upset with the Fantastic Beasts franchise, I'm going to break down the biggest issues. The things that don't garner real disdain, but the ones that leave me feeling apathetic toward my favorite fandom. This is what I think is just not working with this movie. So, for the first real problem, who is this movie targeted towards? Die-hard fans of the Harry Potter books and movies were probably going to see the film regardless of the negative reviews. I, for one, wanted to be able to judge for myself if there was any merit to the critiques and if anything good could be gained from the film as part of a whole series. I didn't hate the movie completely, but even I found it confusing and hard to follow. I'll talk more about that in a few minutes. So, hardcore fans will see it and will probably enjoy some of the backstory that relates to the characters involved in the Harry Potter series, aka Dumbledore, but for everyone else? It's not exactly a movie for children, either. The tone is darker and more mature than both the Harry Potter movies and the Fantastic Beasts movie. The cute beasts themselves only make small appearances and are more or less unrelated to the overall plot. The names are hard to say, Eddie Redmayne is not exactly the best at enunciating, which can make the dialogue a little bit difficult to understand, and there's very little joy in the movie. Most of the magic is used to kill or otherwise attack people, and the humor, again, stems primarily from Jacob, whose use of sarcasm is funny, but I'm not sure how relatable it is to kids. So, if the casual viewer is confused, the fans are critical, and the plot really isn't for children, who is this movie for? Now let's touch on why this movie is hard to follow. Who is this movie based around? Who is the main character? Promotional material will have you think it's Newt, but when you really examine what he does in this movie, it's not only separate from the rest of the plot, it's also completely outside of the main villain's plot. To our knowledge, he doesn't really have any emotional connection or personal beef with Grindelwald himself, and he isn't spurred into action because of him. So, is the main character Grindelwald? Heck, his name is even in the title of the film. But for a movie called The Crimes of Grindelwald, did we get any evidence toward what his crimes actually are? Okay, yeah, he escaped from prison, but that doesn't seem like the real reason people want to track him down in this film. He might have killed the wizards with the carriage at the beginning, but we don't even know if they died or not. He practically gave the ministry dude his wand back and allowed him to survive his plummet toward the water. We know he's a radical with some messed up views, but we're also told that the good guys are using unnecessary violence in order to track him down. He definitely contributed to the death of exactly three muggles in the movie, none of which he killed himself, but alright, that is a crime. He doesn't seem to want to kill all muggles either, he just believes that wizards should be free from hiding from them. I mean, for goodness sakes, even the good guys don't respect muggles in this movie and have laws against marrying them, so comparatively, I'm not really sure how much of a crime this is. We did see many Aurors die in the last few minutes of the movie, but he gave them ample time to escape, and again, it all happened in the final moments, probably less than 5% of the film at most. We were given more crimes from the newspaper headlines at the beginning of the last movie than in this movie as a whole. So, sure, he's a bad guy, but he's no Voldemort, and as a main villain, eh. And maybe he's not supposed to be purely evil. An antagonist having internal conflict and multidimensionality can be a great thing. See, Cersei Lannister, Kylo Ren, or Scar. But we don't get any of this from him either. He doesn't really seem to care about his followers, but he doesn't hate them either. He's not a cookie-cutter comic book villain, but he doesn't really have that much substance either. Most of what we know about Grindelwald stems from the seventh Harry Potter book and his relationship with Dumbledore, but again, that's all being told to us, or you had to find out about it before this film. It's not being given to us or shown in this movie. Okay, so the main character is not Grindelwald, and it's probably not really Newt. So who is it? Is it Dumbledore? Leda? Theseus? Kama? Jacob? Queenie? Tina? Nagini, random chick with the vape skull, Noop's stalker assistant, the baby Nifflers, or any of those other characters whose names I didn't even pick up on even though I watched the movie twice and specifically tried to listen for what they were. 
This movie has an absurd number of side characters, which serves the double whammy of both giving us people we want to care about, but not giving us enough time with them to learn anything about them. Which brings us to Credence. In pretty much every other Hero's Journey-esque movie, the main character is the one with the tragic backstory, the one who has a real reason to dislike or mistrust the antagonist, the one who is new to the world of the story. Credence is the new Harry Potter. But even here, we aren't given enough to understand his actions, ignoring the jumps in the plot that are never actually answered, such as, how does Credence get to Europe? How is he able to join a magical circus without knowing literally anything about the magical world? Why does he care more about finding out what his real name is rather than getting a wand or learning how to control his Obscurus? We don't know why he trusts Grindelwald after the events of the last movie, and why he isn't drawn more towards getting help from Tina or Newt or anyone else who showed him kindness in the past. Again, here we have multiple problems. We're being told that Credence is important based on the idea that he's connected to a powerful wizarding family, but our pseudo-main character Newt doesn't seem to give two Fs about him. It's like we're being told to care about Harry Potter, but our main character's Justin Finch Fletchley. Sometimes they're past meat, but for the most part Justin's just over here hanging out with his Hufflepuffs and trying to get a date with a wizard cop or whatever. Without having a rootable, clear main character who is both driving the plot of the film and invested in the actions of the main villain, we don't know who we're supposed to be paying attention to. Is it the Beast? Lita's family tree? The sad kid? The forced love triangle? Stumbledore's past? All of the above? None of the above? Don't get me wrong, you can make a movie work with many characters, each with their own stories, but if you don't have a clear front runner, the movie lacks focus. Moving on! I've talked about how the movie feels jumbled due to a lack of strong main characters, but now let's look at the actions of the characters we do have. In order for the plot to progress, we need the characters to make decisions that we can understand based on what we know of who they are. We need to first understand what drives them, and then see how their motivations lead their actions. Take Newt, for example. The previous film led us to believe that Newt is motivated by protecting those that others do not understand. He's the champion of the innocent and misunderstood. He cares for seemingly dangerous beasts that others would run from or attack. And he even has a connection with Credence and is able to calm him down when the government would have had him destroyed. Lita's line that Newt has never met a monster he couldn't love fits with this image of the character. But in this movie, Newt refuses to aid the Ministry in their goal of keeping Credence away from Grindelwald, even though agreeing to help would have allowed him to handle the situation in a more humane fashion than the Ministry wanted. He even dismisses Dumbledore's request in order to avoid going to prison, but almost immediately breaks the law anyway. He's a crappy boss to Bunty and a crappy friend to both Jacob and Queenie. He disregards their feelings and ignores them when they're trying to talk to him. The only thing that motivates Newt's action in the film is love. And I'm not talking about selfless love, not love for the innocent or his friends or family, not the same kind of love that Harry Potter had. No, I'm talking about romantic love. He breaks the law not to help Jacob or find Credence or stop Grindelwald, but to get back together with Tina, a witch he had almost zero romantic chemistry with in the previous film. Someone who not three months ago was trying to get him locked up for performing magic in front of a muggle. And then there's the Lita business. Does he like her? Love her? Are they friends? Enemies? Even in the flashbacks, Newt's relationship with Lena seems to be more about their shared interest in creatures rather than her as a person. We don't understand the love that drives all of Newt's choices, so we have a hard time caring about it. And then, like, he hates his brother, but we don't exactly know why. Yeah, they have different interests, but his brother seems like a nice chap who just wants the best for him. So I don't know about that either. The other characters suffer from more or less the same problem. We don't know what Grindelwald's trying to do. We know that he's all about the greater good and not hiding from muggles, but very little of his rally speech touches on how to do this. We know that he wants to use Credence to destroy Dumbledore, but we don't know why since Dumbledore doesn't seem to be trying to stop any of Grindelwald's plans anyway. I'm being told I should hate Grindelwald, that he's powerful and dangerous, but his driving forces are so loosely related to anyone else's that he doesn't seem like an immediate threat. Voldemort murdered many of the relatives of the main characters and was actively altering the structure of the wizarding world. Newt, Tina, Leda, and many other characters have almost no personal connection to Grindelwald and therefore have very little reason to care about him other than, he's bad, we should stop him. It doesn't make sense for them to care, so I have a hard time caring either. At least now that Queenie has been sucked up into his group, some of them might feel more personally attached in the next movie, but that's a discussion for another time. Okay, let's chat real quick about pacing. 
I went to this movie with my grandfather, who has never seen or read anything Harry Potter related. But I figured, hey, Fantastic Beast was pretty easy to follow, I'm sure he'll still enjoy it. Now, I consider myself pretty much a fanatic when it comes to the whole Wizarding World shebang, but even I left the theater thinking, what the heck did I just see? Even if you're a pretty casual viewer, you can follow the general plot of any one of the Harry Potter movies, or at least the first six. Harry's a boy wizard, learning magic in order to fight the bad guys while experiencing the everyday ups and downs of adolescence. The books and movies all follow the same one-year timeline with relatively the same formula. Harry goes to school, bad things start to happen, Harry and friends figure out the mystery, fight the bad guys, and win. Spoilers. Obviously, the Fantastic Beasts movies were going to follow a different formula given that they're primarily about adult witches and wizards who already know magic and are not confined to the same locations or year-long time frame. Even so, the first movie has a pretty cohesive plot. Newt comes to America with a case of magical creatures. Several escape. Hijinks ensue. They are recaptured, and he leaves New York. Now, wait, you may be saying, what about all the Credence and Graves business? Exactly. The climax of the movie barely fits with the overall plot of the rest of the film. It's a subplot that was clearly meant to be part of the bigger picture of the whole series, but had very little to do with anything else our main character was doing. Which is okay. I mean, it's not great, but at least it's only like 10% of the movie. Now, for this movie, it's a whole separate fiasco. There are no fewer than 14 different plot lines to follow. Newt likes animals. Credence wants to find his mom. Tina wants to find Credence. Newt wants to find Tina. Jacob wants to find Queenie. Queenie wants to marry Jacob. Theseus wants to marry Leda. Leda is around. Kama wants revenge. The Aurors want to find Credence. The Aurors want Dumbledore to help. Dumbledore wants to stay out of it. The Aurors want to stop Grindelwald. Grindelwald wants to vape. And probably more that I'm not remembering. And these are all happening simultaneously. Many of these, especially the ones involving our main character, Newt, have nothing to do with each other. And unlike the last film, Newt's story probably only covers around 25% of the runtime of the film. It's a long-ass movie with a lot of information and fun easter eggs, but it's also all over the place, and it's really easy to get lost. Take, for instance, the subplot that Newt doesn't like the Aurors, and particularly this one dude with the creepy face and hat who comes out of the shadows like a freaking cartoon character. Remember him? Did you catch his name? The second time I watched the movie, I was specifically trying to figure out who he was and why Newt hated him, and I couldn't figure it out. The fan wiki says his name is Gunnar Grimson, a bounty hunter who secretly switches sides to help Grindelwald. That's right, this practically unnamed character that we're told nothing about even has a subplot. One that is much more central to the overall plot than anything Newt does. So make that 15 stories. Add in 10 minute long flashbacks, magical circuses, and Nicholas Flamel, and you've got the crimes of Grindelwald, one long ass mess. But hey, it's got magic, so, you know, I'll probably still buy the DVD. But, but Mary, it's still a Harry Potter movie. You have to care, right? What about all the nostalgia? What about Travers, Nagini? What about McLaggen? Well, my guess is at some point in the making of this film, they realized that what people really wanted was just more of what we already knew and loved. So enter a trip to Hogwarts, full of way nicer robes and timeline issues. I'm looking at you, McGonagall. And while I'll admit these scenes did make me smile, for the most part they just made me want to watch the films that they were referencing. Or at the very least, crack open some fanfiction. So yeah, it was fun, but truthfully these scenes probably hurt the film more than they helped it. Once again, our main characters were only tangentially related to these moments, and mostly served as a cop-out way of making us care about Lita before she died. Plus, we spent two whole scenes on that stupid bridge from the later Harry Potter movies that was definitely not in the books. Okay, now I'm just being nitpicky. All that being said, I love Jude Law and Young Scamander. They may or may not have carried the film for me. So, what's my overall review? Honestly, it's just okay. I don't have the fire and desire to debate the pros and cons that I felt leaving nearly every other Harry Potter movie in the past. I simply don't care enough about most of these characters to garner that kind of emotion, and it's not for lack of wanting to. I'll admit, the whole magical creatures angle of these movies doesn't really draw me in. I like the idea that these films would be separate from the main franchise, that they would give us new plots and new characters to be interested in. And while Queenie and Jacob can be entertaining at times, and Newt could have been turned into a fascinating character in his own right, the stories we're being presented with about these characters aren't doing their job to support the new personalities. 
I want to root for them, be invested in their adventures, and care what happens to them. But I just don't. The plot holes and lack of development doesn't allow for that. So right now, I'm giving this movie the 2 out of 5 stars. I'm not disgusted enough to give it a 1, but nothing really pulled me in either. It's just meh. And at this point, the most I can hope for is that the overall series as a whole will be more cohesive. Maybe when it's all said and done, The Crimes of Grindelwald will serve as an informative piece of the whole that meshes better when you marathon the movies in a single sitting. But as an individual film, I just don't care. I just don't care long enough to make like a 16-minute video about it, but whatever. <laughs>